All right, welcome back everyone to the next episode on SAP Cloud Platform Training with Ami and Abhav. In by far in this episode of SAP Cloud Platform Training or SAP Business Technology Platform Training, we have learned about how to create your first Spring Boot project with enabling microservices on business technology platform. We have seen how we can add our entities to create database tables, which are currently uh, being created on my local PostgreSQL database. And going forward, we will move these to our uh, database in SAP Cloud Foundry. So SAP Cloud Foundry provides a free PostgreSQL trial where you can store data and you can manage complete database as a service into the cloud. So this is what we've created. On top of this, we have added our service. Now, interesting thing about our data model by far is we have a vendor table and this vendor table has a association with vendor addresses. So you are connecting with address table and the address table will con then contain perhaps multiple addresses for a vendor. So that is why it's a one to many relationship using uh, Spring JPA. And then we have created a uh, interface for each of the entities. And then also we have created the services by far. So as part of our service layer, we are calling the Spring JPA interface to perform all the curd queue operations. I have also shown in the last class how can you automatically generate a interface uh, which will serve as a rest endpoint for all the curd queue operations. Then we have controller, which is our final web service offering using Spring Web. And that is what offers a web service for all the curd queue operations. Now, when we also create a, in our last class, a repository resource, which also serves as an endpoint, new endpoint. And as an outcome of this sessions by far, what we are able to get is a end-to-end -end microservice running in my local machine, storing all the data into the local PostgreSQL database before we move to cloud. So I will go and test it on my local host first. And then when I just hit our endpoint for a vendor, you would see right now I don't have any data, but I can insert new data. And then I also have a new vendor endpoint which is what is showing you the vendor data. So using the Postman tool, we can insert new records. Uh, so as a result of that, we will be able to insert not just the vendor, but we will also be able to insert the data of our, uh, our addresses. So you can see here in the Postman, I am passing the vendor data and also associated address data together. And when we do a post, it will create a new vendor in my in my backend system. So now we are able to post the data and you can see it created a new vendor and also the address information together. When you do go back and do a get, you can see you get all the vendor data back again. And then we can see here, uh, we also get the lazy loading for address data. So you can load a single vendor and then from there you can load the address data. So this is a simple microservice with little complicated data model which has also association between two so this is all managed by spring jpa in today's lesson what we did was we have built a end-to-end -end ui application in uh, in our project for cloud foundry and we've added a ui module with model view controller architecture using fury technology and here is where we are calling our microservice we have built a reusable uh, JavaScript file, which is uh, having generic method to call all the microservices performing get, put, post, and delete operations. And then this is being called in my controller in a very reusable fashion so that you don't have to uh, every time write a complex Ajax call, completely reusable, and you just have to pass required parameter and that call returns your promise. And using that, you are confirming whether the data is being created or not. So if you go back to the system and if I enter some demo data, for example, Anubav Trainings, Anubav Oberoi, and I will say anubav.abap at gmail.com. And I'll put some demo data, yes. And I will click on uh, Save button. 
my data gets created and if I load data again you can see this data is getting saved into my uh, into my database PostgreSQL database using Spring Boot and as a result you can also go back and check your PostgreSQL which is running in which you can see my data has been uh, updated in fact created in the system now this is an end-to-end -end development of a Cloud Foundry application using Spring Boot and Java so the, now as a next step we will see uh, how do we deploy this application into the Cloud Foundry and uh, how do we connect this to a database which is available in the Cloud Foundry so SAP Cloud Business Technology Platform offers you a free PostgreSQL instance uh, which is a lightweight free PostgreSQL instance in the next episode I'll show you how to connect to that instance and how to take this whole application into the cloud as a Cloud Foundry native application and then subsequent units we will learn how to add security basically using access UAA component and also perhaps see how can we do the same instead of PostgreSQL to a HANA database I hope you enjoyed this session thank you so much for watching 